Hi, Eddie. Chapel Hill artists. I miss you guys so much. I want to do a little video of some ideas that you could do at home with yourself, with your siblings, with your family. Um, so I'm going to walk you through some things, some ideas. We're going to go start out in my uh, front porch. We're going to go through my house. I've got several things set up for you. But first of all, I want you to know how much I miss you and how much there's just a big ache in my heart because I miss seeing you guys. So um, here we go. So one idea that I have for your um, front porch, whether it's your driveway, your sidewalk, is to do a cool mosaic shape. Um, I did a heart. You could do a cross. You could do a message. You could just do an abstract shape. All you do is you just kind of tape it out with um, tape. And then you run um, tessellating lines through the whole shape. And then you just color it in with um, sidewalk chalk. I have a whole bunch of sidewalk chalk. Hopefully you do too. Um, white chalk would work too, just to make a white on um, cement kind of a design. And then uh, when you're finished, you just pull it off and you got a cool design. How fun for your, um, your driveway, um, especially with Easter coming up, just some fun ideas. Let's go inside and we'll look at some more things. My dog Roy's gonna come with us. <laughs> All right, we're going to pop in here to my office, and I want to show you some things that you can do on your computer. So um, I'm going to post this um, for you guys, but there's a step-by-step -step way that you can do some really cool editing, photo image editing on Microsoft Word. I didn't know this until just recently. So you just find a picture that you want. It could be from Google Image or from Bing or just a photo that you like, and then you import it into your Microsoft Word document. And with a few clicks, and again, I'm gonna post this right online for you guys, you can turn your image into a posterized image. I did this with my daughter Tatum, who was in Australia recently. Thank goodness she's back. Um, and it just turns your, your image into a flattened shape with different shades. And there's all kinds of things that you can do with that. So this is a really fun idea to do um, some photo editing image um, connections to your photos that you can do right on the online. You can just post those, you can print them, you can turn them into other kinds of art. I've done this with my 2D art class, turn it into watercolors. This is a little tricky, the few more steps involved, but this is fun to do just on your computer. Let's go to the kitchen. I got some things to show you there. Come on, let's go. This is something anybody can do in their house. I know we've done color theory in fourth grade and fifth grade, um, even third grade. So if you think back to the color wheel and how 12 colors are arranged around in a real specific order, you can make your own color wheel out of found objects. I usually put yellow at the top and then red and blue are the primary colors. They kind of form a triangle. And then between those primary colors or secondary colors, green and orange and violet or purple. And then between those colors are those tertiary colors. So um, the challenge will be to find uh, a blue-green or a blue-violet or a red-violet or a red-orange or a yellow-orange. A yellow and see if you can just with found objects make a whole color wheel. So fun to try that at home, and it kind of challenges your eye. You can even do this with your siblings, your parents. Over here, I have some really fun ideas for you to try if you don't have paint. Now, before I um, get started with this, you really need to make sure it's okay with your parents um, that you try these things. Um, one idea is to just use uh, food coloring. Actually, really vibrant colors. You can mix them. Um, you can use them. Um, right straight out of the bottle so they're very dark and very uh, have strong hues or you can water them down. Um, I suggest that you make sure you've got some paper on your table. I'm painting just on copy paper right from um, my printer and um, you can mix, you can make um, some of those colors that we talked about on the color wheel and then you can just do some fun painting. Uh, really really bold colors. Now this is messy, um, and so make sure, again, make sure that it's okay with your parents. Another idea is why not paint on eggs? Um, cardboard, coffee filters are another um, idea, or even just napkins. So lots of different things that you can paint on if you don't have special watercolor paper. Um, with Easter coming up, maybe you decorate eggs at your house, and you could do some painting right on eggs. What a great canvas that is. Here's another crazy idea. Again, you gotta run this by mom and dad, <laughs> but you can actually, 
believe it or not, you can paint with coffee. I know, especially that, that um, cup of coffee that's at the very bottom of the pot. I love that one. Mm -hmm. But um, you could ask your parents if they're done with their coffee and if there's a little bit of coffee left, you could actually paint with coffee. Um, you get kind of the darkest value right out of the pot. You could even try adding some grounds to make it darker. Just kind of play around with values. This is definitely just gonna be like a value study. Value is that word that we use in art that describes lightness and darkness. I'm gonna paint right onto um, paper towel. So um, you could just even practice shading um, a circle or a square. We've done this in um, third grade. If you remember third grade art, we practice making values. Um, it's a little tricky just with, if you're um, working just with coffee, but again, the grounds kind of give you that extra darkness. See if you can make really dark values all the way to light values. It's kind of like a little bit of drawing and a little bit of painting. Um, this is probably more for designs. Um, it's hard to get a real specific object or subject when you're doing this, but it's a fun way to paint without paint. Let's go over here. I want to talk to you about a couple more things. Um, in the weeks coming up, we're going to start talking about the cardboard arcade idea. And so, um, the dog's walking out the door, Tatum. Uh, okay, let's go get the dog. <laughs> Rory, come here. Can you Rory. Come here. You can't go. Let's go. <laughs> come on. Close let's go. This way. Oh, hi. <laughs> so, getting back to this idea. Anyways. Um, it's a good idea to start collecting cardboard boxes or recyclable materials. Here's a few that I've been just starting to collect from my house. Um, in a couple weeks, we'll start talking about our cardboard arcade and just some ideas that you could connect with recyclable mark ideas of cardboard to make a, a game or um, some kind of a connection to the, the cardboard arcade. We'll talk about that in a few weeks. All right, let's talk about this idea. Um, I want to challenge you to maybe write a message on your window. Um, I have Expo markers. Those are the markers that teachers use on uh, marker boards. Mm -hmm. But I know that regular water-based markers, even Sharpies, work on a window and they do erase. So I want to challenge you to write a message from the inside out that will be read from the outside in. Um, I'm writing this too shall pass. And it's hard because you have to write right to left and then flip your letters around. So if an S normally goes this way, it's going to go this way. Whoops, I don't want to do an S, I want to do a P, pardon me. Hash this, so P, A, this too shall, let's see, goes like this. Practice writing backwards and from left to right. And then if you want, you could even turn these into block letters. This is a good challenge for your spatial awareness. Um, kind of fun to just write a message. I'm seeing lots of messages in my neighborhood. Just positive, hopeful messages, scripture. Uh, but words kind of give you that challenge to, uh, when you're writing them backwards, um, you have to think right to left and then each letter backwards. So I made a little message on my window that says this too shall pass. All right, one last thought. Let's go out to the fire pit and I want to talk to you about some other ideas. Let's go. All right. Let's come over here and we'll sit for just a sec. <laughs> All right, just want to talk to you a little bit about some ideas that you can do for the grown-ups in your life. Um, I think you know, but I'm just going to say it, that this is a hard time for the grown-ups. Um, and you can be a really positive voice in their life. So here's a couple of ideas. You can make a poster for your family that just um, shows a positive message. This too shall pass, or we got this, or let's stay together, or we're better together. Well, the together is the team, something like that. Come up with a phrase for your, for your family and make a poster. Take this on yourself. Um, 
Another idea is just write a note to your mom and dad and just tell them how proud you are of them, how um, you're praying for them, um, what a great job they're doing for your family. And then another thought too is if you have anyone that lives in an assisted living situation, like a grandma or grandpa or aunt and uncle or a great grandma or grandpa, send them a note. I know they are feeling um, the effects of being alone a lot more than we are. And this is hard for us, right? Um, so send a note to um, someone who might be in an assisted living facility. That's all for now. Um, try some of the, these things at home. I'd love if you could just send me some pictures of your ideas. You can email them to me. I'd love to, to look at them and comment on them. Feel free to ask me questions and let me how, know how it's going. My plan is to post something every week with some ideas for you to do with stuff around the house. Just create ways to create, to engage with your creativity and your art skills and um, just kind of hanging on through this whole thing together and using creativity get, to get through each day. Thanks, you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.